So now that you understand what it means to live with autism, maybe if we put things in perspective, it will be better. And we decided to continue our series, Things No One Told You About Motherhood. And this time we're joined by Sholakwe Azazi. She's a mother of two boys and her first child is, was diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. She shares her story from a personal point of view, the challenges, the moment she found out, and how they've been able to adapt to life. At the end of the day, mothers are indeed superheroes. Enjoy. My name is Sholakri Azazi. I'm a mom of two. My first child is five, is on the spectrum, and my second child is three. I have two boys and a very lovely husband, very lovely supporting husband. Growing up, I had so many expectations of motherhood, of things that I wanted to do, how I wanted to raise my children. On a scale of one to, to 10, I would say my expectation, how my expectations have matched up to my reality, I would say, I would say seven. I have had to, redefine what my reality should be. My two pregnancy journeys were not the same. With my first pregnancy, I would first say, you know, when I got married, I didn't get pregnant immediately. The first pregnancy, I was riding the joy of it all because I was like, oh yes, I'm pregnant, this is what to expect and all of that. It didn't all go as you would expect because people would not tell you a lot about delivery. They brush it all off and then just make it, but you know, you go into labor and you're like, wow. At first, initially, I was like, oh, they say, oh, you're doing the, the post Hebrew woman kind of, you know, pray, Hebrew woman, you push, you this, you die. I so I said, oh, I can do Hebrew woman now, you know, that kind of thing. And so, uh, 10 hours down the line, they say, ah, you have not even reached eight centimeters. I said, ah. of course, I couldn't take the pain on my own, so I said, let me call that epidural person. This pain is not, is not child's pain because I was in labor 24 hours. The second pregnancy was a breeze. <laughs> I had the baby 30 minutes. The old labor, everything was 30 minutes. So yes, back to my first child. And that's the reason why we're here. I want to talk about what went down. Well, my first child didn't have any issues with reaching his um, developmental milestones as a baby. He walked when he ought to, he crawled when he ought to, he used the right words when he ought to, you know. But um, I think at about 15 eight to 18 months, his um, words, number of words reduced. And then at 20 months or thereabout, he went mute, not one word. We didn't hear one word, like a whole week went by, not one word out of my son. And so we got worried, like what's going on? This was a child that was already using words like mommy, daddy. He was saying, come, going up, going down, calling, you know, labels and stuff. And then suddenly he, could, he wasn't saying anything. It was like, ah, 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 oh, 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 you know, baby babble, pretty much. And so, the doctor said to me, you know, I would have to flag him down for autism. That was my very first journey into that world of autism, knowing that this can happen to just about anybody. Any child is vulnerable to this. And I remember sitting down there and he telling me, this is this and everything, but you know, early intervention is key. And so let's get him straight into speech therapy, you know, and we got him started on, on speech therapy back there. We were in Dallas at the moment, you know, and then we came back home and it's just been me riding the journey since then. For the first time, I remember sitting in the doctor's office and then they telling me that, oh, you know, your son is being flagged down for autism. And a lot of thoughts went through my head because I felt, okay, what is autism? That was the first thing that came through my head. And then 
or why is this, is this something I've done wrong? Where did I go wrong? Was it during the childbirth process? Did I take something I shouldn't have taken? What, you know, what, what am I dealing with, basically? And I remembered um, then tell, him telling me then, the doctor telling me that, it might be, it might not be, but they cannot give me a, a, a real a diagnosis until is three because they don't give children the adults diagnosis until um, you are three. So it took me a whole year from the time the doctor flagged my son down for autism to that time when I got the autism diagnosis. I searched, I had to tear my whole world apart and search for what it is that I did wrong. At what point I failed, but I didn't find anything. And I think I was very hurt. I was very disappointed. I was pained because I felt like you're told to do everything right. Eat right, take your vitamins, take this, take that. And yet you still end up with a child on the spectrum. It's not your fault. The doctors don't know what causes autism. All we know is that it's a developmental disability that affects kids in certain areas of their life. And I remember falling into deep depression, being suicidal in my thoughts. I remember that people would talk to me and I don't even hear them. I was a ghost of myself. And don't forget, I just had a baby. But I wasn't present for that baby. I wasn't. This wasn't postpartum. This was just me mourning what I had wished for, what I hoped for, and I remember that I broke down in tears. I cried because I felt lost, I felt dejected, I felt like everything has failed me. And I came back home with the hope that, okay, fine, there's family around, there's support, you know, and then in that one year, I still felt alone, still felt lost. And then I realized that they can't help you because they don't know where, they don't know how. And even when they offer, they're offering from their own end of what they know, what they feel you need, as opposed to what you think you need, what you need. And so I needed to wake up and pull myself out of that despair. It took a lot. But I'm, I'm glad I did, because if I didn't, I don't know where I will be right now. My husband has been very supportive. He would stick with me, even when I know that I'm not communicating, I'm not being the best communicator, and I'm not getting the words out properly. He would stay with me, even when I'm screaming and I'm crying and I'm I'm just so glad that he's there because you talk to some parents and they don't have that support and it's saddening because I do not know how I will have been able to pull myself out of that depression state if not for my husband. Getting the diagnosis for a child affected us as a family. It affected, it changed a lot for us. It made us reevaluate ourselves. It made us start to question, it made us first, we had to break down everything we believed in and start to build on our new reality because it first paralyzes you and you start to think, where do I go from here? What do I do? We first had to come and meet at a point and decide that this is the new us. So now that we know that this is the new us, how can we make this new us work as a unit? And it was not until we actually decided that this is the new us and then started moving from that place, did we start you know, to see a new change in our relationship. My relationship is better, it's, it's blooming, it's flourishing. I'm very pleased with my husband, he's very pleased with me. We're pleased with our children. We're glad about our achievements. And I'm glad because, not because of anything, but because we had to recenter ourselves back to God. 
made me remember that promise I made to God when I was pregnant at three months and then the doctor flagged my child down for Down syndrome that I said I will take the child as long as it's a child whatever else you give me with the child I will take the child and so you have to sign it off and I said yes give me whatever paper I'm going to sign I will sign it I cannot allow you to come and put one needle into my tummy and then you tell me that I can bleed out as in, and the baby can bleed out and that, that I would lose the pregnancy. So I said, no. And then I said, no, I'm working in faith. If this is the child God is giving me and the child that God is giving me is going to have a disability, it would empower me with the right tools for me to, you know, go on this journey. So fast forward, they tell me my son has autism. And so this was me saying to myself, God, shouldn't I have just done that test then? But then autism is not Down syndrome. So I, I comforted myself with that again, that no, but it's not Down syndrome I'm working with. I'm working with autism. Okay, fine. I am ready to run with it because I know that you will not give me more than I can handle. So it took me to remember that promise I made with God for me to come right back to accepting my reality. Autism is a developmental disorder that affects children primarily in three different areas. Communication, that has to do with speech and language, um, behavior, and social skills. Not all children on the spectrum are the same. You have, they all, that's why it's called an autism spectrum. You have, they fall on different ends of the spectrum. My son, as of two years ago, was nonverbal. When I say nonverbal, he couldn't, he would not speak. He can have non-verbal gestures like he would drag you to things that he want, he will cry for things, but he would not use the words. But fast forward to today, he is on level three speech, meaning he can make verbal requests for things he wants. He can make sentences, he can function properly at age appropriate, you know, he, he goes to a regular school. Not all kids on the spectrum can do that. Some kids are not even, I mean, they're not verbal. Eight years old, they're non-verbal. So I am very lucky with my lot. I remember the first time my son, Wayne Priye, said I love you to me. That was an epic moment for me, because, you know, these are things that, you know, when they tell you your child has autism, your child is non-verbal, your child is this. So you see all those negative, negative, it just pulls you all the way down. And then when you now hear, I love you, you know, it fills me up. Like I remember when the first time he said, mommy, it was like sweet sound to my ears. I just, you know, when he just says mommy, I say yes. This is coming from someone that used to call me mama before and then didn't call me anything anymore. I became someone that would just drag their hand to go and show whatever and he wasn't using any words. That's one big joy for me, like to hear him verbalize some of the thoughts in his head, to, for me to talk to him and for him to respond back to me, for me to see him present in the situation. The other day, he started taking piano classes and then he played um, a particular um, piece for me and I was so happy, I was filled with joy, you know. Those are the things, so, so those little, little things just fill me up, I get filled up with joy. A typical day in my son's life, like for example, is off to school at the moment, he goes to school, he likes routine. So if you teach him, he will learn it, but it has to be the way you have taught him. So he would wake up in the morning at 6, 6.30, he's awake, take a bath, have breakfast, when he's done with breakfast, he get ready for school, goes to school, comes home, you tell him you have homework, he will do the homework, and then if he's supposed to have screen time that day, he will do screen time, if no screen time, and it plays, it functions well. And that's because we had early intervention. We were able to detect early and start putting in place. We were able to identify what his strengths are and where his areas of needs were. And we we're able to address that area of need.
so much so that it would not show that there's any any difference with him. Some of the things no one told me about motherhood, no one told me that, I mean, I knew that you'd be responsible for another individual and all of that, but it's hard. It's so hard. Sometimes I look at myself and then I have to pretty much remind myself that I am still me. I still want to look beautiful. I still want to look glam. It's not, I mean, yes, I have a mini person that I'm in charge of, but I have to put that focus back on me. I want to look good for myself. I remembered one day when my son said to me, um, Mommy, you know you are Priya's best friend. Priya is your best friend. That, and I said to him, so who is your best friend? And he said, oh, he rambled and called several names. I said, so what makes you say that I'm Priya's best friend? He said, because you're always there for him. And this is my three-year-old saying that. And it made me realize that sometimes it simply means that he has observed that I have not been fair in certain areas and in certain accommodations that I make for his older brother. And so it made me sit him down and explain to him that sometimes issues like this will arise. I would tend to allow him do certain things and expect more from you. Not because I don't love you, but because I know you have it in you to be better. And so I tell him that I'm doing this from a place of love for you. Not that I do not love you, I love you. But sometimes we have to be there for Priya more than you think we should. For any mom out there, whether you just got the diagnosis today, you've had the diagnosis since, you suspect something is wrong with your child, I want you to know that it's tough. It's very, very tough. And it can be very lonely out there, but just hang in there and hold on to whatever faith you believe in. It's not easy, trust me, I've been there. The depression is real. It can be consuming. It can make you doubt yourself. But just hang in to your faith, to your belief, to, to know, knowing that, yes, indeed, God did not fail you. It's not your fault that your child is the way your child is. Even the scientists have not conclusively told us what causes autism. So it's not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. God just gave you a special, a special little person for you to take care of. So find the strength in that child. Enjoy those little, little moments. Because at the end of the day, those are the moments that really count the most. My name is Sholakia Azazi. I'm a mother of two beautiful boys. My first son is five, he's on the spectrum. Motherhood to me is joy. Motherhood to me is, is a fantastic journey. And I think every day I keep rediscovering myself because I know that within me, I have the power to do more. And without pushing myself too hard and holding on to my faith, I know that at the end of the day, I would have a good song, a song of joy to sing at the end of the day for these children. To enjoy more of these our Ogonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.